जे जे थॉम्सन रिवील दैट एटम ऑफ डिफरेंट एलिमेंट्स कंसिस्ट ऑफ नेगेटिवली चार्ज पार्टिकल्स कॉल्ड एज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स हाउ एवर एटम ऑन अ होल आर इलेक्ट्रिकली न्यूट्रल देर फोर द एटम मस्ट कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ पॉजिटिव चार्ज टू न्यूट्रलाइज द नेगेटिव चार्ज ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन बट वॉट इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एन एटम In this chapter, we'll be studying three models which defines the structure of an atom. First, let us start with J. J. Thomson's model. J. J. Thomson's model or plum pudding model. According to this model, positive charge of the atom is uniformly distributed throughout the volume of the atom, and negatively charged electrons are embedded. just just like seeds in watermelon plum pudding model was based on hypothesis therefore his uh, j j thompson student rutherford wanted to prove the atomic model with the help of his students that is giger and marston so together giger and marston un- under the guidance of rutherford performed alpha scattering experiment alpha particle scattering experiment is also called as rutherford's experiment or rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment or giger marston experiment in this experiment we have a source of alpha part- alpha particle here bismuth which is made to pass through lead bricks to get narrow or collimated beam this beam is made to fall on gold foil of thickness 2.1 into 10 to the power of minus 7 meters scattering takes place and scattered alpha particles are collected with a movable detector which has zinc sulfide screen and is attached to a microscope as the name suggests movable detector means it can move and the detector is not fixed when alpha particle hits zinc sulfide screen flashes are produced which are enhanced and seen through a micro let us quickly revise the experiment apparatus consists of an alpha particle emitter gold foil detection screen and lead bricks in our case procedure procedure when alpha particles from a source in our case bismuth are made to fall on lead bricks the alpha particles become collimated these collimated alpha particles are made to fall on gold foil and hence scattering takes place we can see that most of the alpha particles are undeviated only few undergo a large scattering but most of them have very small scattering angle let us quickly revise the experiment apparatus consists of an alpha particle emitter gold foil detection screen and lead bricks in our case procedure a graph of scattering angle in x axis and number of scattered particles detected in y axis was plotted and it was observed that most of the alpha particles passed through gold foil foil the second observation was that only about 0.14% of the incident alpha particles scatter more than 1 degree and 
third observation was that about one in eight thousand alpha particles deflect more than ninety degrees. From the observations of the experiment, Rutherford explained that since most of the alpha particles emerge undeviated most of the space in atom is empty and also to deflect alpha particle backwards it must experience a large repulsive force this is possible if entire positive charge and most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in a small region at the center of the nucleus after this experiment rutherford concluded that plum pudding model is wrong and gave us second atomic model called as rutherford's atomic model or planetary model according to this model the entire positive charge and most of the mass is concentrated in a small region in the center called as nucleus and electron revolves around the nucleus just like planets revolve around the sun hence the name planetary model rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment also suggested that the size of the nucleus is about 10 to the power of minus 15 to 10 to the power of minus 14 meters but according according to kinetic theory size of the atom is about 10 to the power of minus 10 meters therefore the atom is 10000 to 100000 or 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 5 times larger than the size of the nucleus and hence the distance between electron and nucleus is about 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 5 times size of the nucleus alpha particle is nothing but nuclei of helium atom which is positively charged and nucleus of any atom is also positively charged so the force between two positive charges is repulsive force force in our case it is electrostatic force of repulsion expression for electrostatic force is given as f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 divided by r square where q1 and q2 are charges in our case q1 is equal to 2e as helium has two electrons then we are considering q2 as ze where z represents the total number of electrons present in the atom and e represents charge so ze means it is the charge of an atom okay and r is the distance between alpha particle and the nucleus rutherford's model was a success but there were few limitations namely first it could not explain why atoms emit light of discrete wavelength second it could not explain how in how a simple atom like hydrogen can emit complex spectrum of specific wavelength that is when we consider hydrogen hydrogen has one electron but when we look at its spectrum it is very complex instead of one line there are multiple or many line why is it happening it was not explained by rutherford's model third when an electron moves 
it radiates and loses its energy therefore an electron should fall into the nucleus which does not happen hence we can say that stability of an atom was not explained impact parameter is represented as b and is defined as the perpendicular distance between the initial velocity vector of the alpha particle and center of the nucleus from di from diagram number 1 we can see the distance between initial velocity vector which is represented as dotted line and the center of the nucleus which is represented as a black line is given as b which is nothing but impact parameter and the angle between the trajectory of alpha particle and initial velocity vector is given as theta from diagram 2 we can see that when impact parameter is minimum that is zero in our case it is a case of b1 scattering angle is maximum that is 180 degrees degrees it is a case of head on collision now let us consider the second case where impact parameter is maximum that is b5 then our scattering angle will be minimum that is 0 degrees in this case the alpha particles pass undeviated hence we can say impact parameter and scattering angle are inversely proportional or as impact parameter increases the scattering angle decreases distance of closest approach when an alpha particle which is positively charged approaches a nucleus which is again positively charged there is electrostatic force of rip of repulsion taking place so what happens is that kinetic energy starts decreasing and potential energy starts increasing at one particular point called distance of closest approach the entire kinetic energy will be converted into potential energy and after that alpha particle will retrace its path before we start with our derivation let us just understand a little concept okay when an electron revolves around the nucleus there are two forces acting one centripetal force which is directed towards the center and electrostatic force which is in opposite direction if centripetal force is more then electron will fall on the nucleus and if electrostatic force is more electron will fly away from the nucleus therefore both uh, centripetal force should be equal to electrostatic force for an electron to stay in stable orbit let us derive an expression for total energy possessed by an electron when it is moving around the nucleus using rutherford's model we have already seen that for an electron to be in a stable state centripetal centripetal force should be equal to electrostatic force centripetal force fc can be given as mv square by r an electrostatic force fe can be given as 1 by 4 pi epsilon not e square by r 
now i am equating these two terms so mv square by r is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e square by r square in denominator we can see r is common so i can cancel r on lhs and square on rhs so i get mv square is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e square by r r we know that kinetic energy is nothing but half mv square so i'll write half mv square value i'm substituting from above equation 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e square by r so half into 1 by 4 will be equal to 1 by 8 so i get 1 by 8 pi epsilon naught e square by r let me represent potential energy as u the relationship between potential energy and kinetic energy is potential energy is equal to minus 2 times kinetic energy so from here I can write potential energy as minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e square by r. Total energy is given as sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. We have already derived the expression for kinetic energy and potential energy. Let us just substitute them over here. Kinetic energy is 1 by 8 by epsilon naught e square by r square by r plus potential energy is minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e square by r. Here let me take out terms common. Okay. So 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e square by r is common. Then in first part of expression, I'll be left with half minus plus of minus is minus potential energy. The entire term is taken out. So I'll be left with one half minus one is minus half minus half into one by four by epsilon naught e square by R will give me minus 1 by 8 by epsilon naught e square by r which is the total energy of an electron the negative sign over here indicates that the electron is bound to the nucleus